Hi. This instructional video is a continuation of arithmetic sequences. But this time, we're going to take all the results from the sequences and add it together. And that is called the sum of the finite arithmetic series. The arithmetic series, the sum of them all, is given as the notation, the general form, s of n is equal to the n times the quantity of a sub 1 plus the a sub n, the mean of that, divided by 2 that is. And we're going to use this general form to find the entire sum in the series of the sequence. Uh, let me show you how this works. For example, on this particular set of numbers, these are the actual sequences. Whatever the result is, we got 3, then we got 8, so on and so forth. And we're going to add it all up or at least whatever the sequence they give us, the total series that is. So in order to do that, first we have to find the difference between each of the sequences. So in this case, to go from 3 to 8, that's 5. To go from 8 to 13, that's a 5. So the common difference, the D, is going to be positive 5 because this is increasing. If it was decreasing, you'll say negative 5. And the initial number of the series over here is given as the 3. So given those information, we could start to find the general rule of the sequences first. And remember, the rule was a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus the difference of n and 1 times the common difference d. So we could generate a rule. a sub 1, we recognize it as being 3, the first of the se sequence here, plus the quantity of n minus the 1 times the common difference of 5 in this case. Do the disputed property. Then we get 3 plus 5n minus the 5. Combine the like terms, and we end up with the general rule. a sub n is equal to negative 2 plus 5n. Okay, that was good. And the question is then, then what is the 20th number on this sequence? So we could determine that. So a sub 20 is equal to negative 2 plus 5 times the 20th spot. So that's going to come out to be negative 2 plus 100. So the 20th number of this sequence is going to be 98. So that was a can do. That was no big deal. But the direction was find the sum of the first n terms, the sum of the entire 20 sequence of numbers, or the series of numbers in this case. And we can't keep on going 3 plus 8 plus 13 plus 8. We can't just keep going on like that. We want to use a notation that was generated over here. So to find that, we go, so s of n is equal to n times the average of the quantity a sub 1 plus a sub n. Okay? So now we want to find the sum of the first 20 sequences, or a series, <laughs> get that mixed up. So in this case, S of 20 is equal to 20th spot times the mean, the average of the first of the series, 3, plus A sub n, and we don't just write the rule, that's the 20. So we put 98 over here, and the average of the two, first and that up to that point, 98th number. And we're adding it all up. So we in this in this case we get well two denominator reduces the coefficient twenty by ten times. So we get ten times three plus ninety eight, which is going to be what is that one hundred one? The total sum of the twenty series is ten times one hundred one, which is going to be ten ten. So that's going to be the answer. If you add up all the series of the sequences up to 20 spots, they will add up to become 1,010. So now the question is, well, where on that series will you get a total sum if you add it all up 366? So we're going to use that standard form again, right over here. So we go S of n is equal to n times the mean of the two quantities, a sub 1 plus a sub n divided by 2, that is. So in this case, we want to find out what position where you get the total sum of 366. So we know what S 
of n is is given as 366. That goes over here. n is what we don't know. What position? a sub 1 we know from the beginning that it is 3, the initial number, plus a, of, a sub n, we know what that is also. We determined it to be this function right here. a sub n is equal to negative 2 plus 5n, all over the 2. Now we're going to get rid of the denominator 2 by multiplying the 2 to both sides of the equation. So, 366 times 2, in this case, becomes 732 is equal to, now it's gone. So we get, well, 3 plus negative 2 is 1, times the n coefficient is n, n times 5n becomes 5n squared. Hmm, starting to look like something, huh? So in this case, when we bring the 732 to the right side of the equation, we end up with, in a standard form, 5n squared plus the n minus 732 is equal to 0. Yeah, we end up with a quadratic function now, equation. And one way to solve this is by factoring. So we know 5n times n is 5n squared. What on earth is 732? <sighs> to find the factors, let's go into a factor tree. 732. I know, let's see, uh, 4 goes into 732. Uh, 1, 8, and 3. And I know 3 goes into 183, uh, 6, and 1 times. And check this out. 4 times 3 is 12. And if I do my distributive property, the full method, 5 times 12 will become 60. 60, we, 60 take away from 61 is still 1 in the middle. So... Here's 12, and here's 61. And the bigger number has to be a positive. There we go. There's a factor form. And 61 times negative 12 is negative 732. Now we're going to use a zero product property that we learned in Algebra 1. 5n plus 61 is equal to 0, or n minus 12 is equal to 0. Take away 61 divided by 5, n becomes negative 61 over 5, but it's a negative number. Uh, negative sequence. We don't have that. That doesn't work. But here, when you add 12 to both sides, n becomes 12. And that becomes our answer. On the 12th position, if you add up all the sequences that goes up to 12 positions and add it up, you'll end up with 366. Yeah, dig that. And then, you try this time This one. So now you said, all right, now these numbers are decreasing. First of all, are they arithmetic in sequence? So find the difference between the two and make sure they're constant. Constant. So between 34 and 31 is a 3. Between 31 and 28 is a 3. So the common difference is minus 3 because it's decreasing consistently. And the initial number is 34. So a sub 1 is 34. So we could find the general rule. And in this case, it is a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times the difference d. So a sub 1, we said it was 34, plus n minus the 1 times the common difference is negative 3. Do the distributive property. So you end up with 34 minus the 3n plus the 3 add the like terms, the general rule for this is going to be 37 minus 3n. So we got the rule. Now we want to find out what is the number on the 32nd spot of this sequence. Or of these given series, that is. <laughs> so to find that, we go a sub 32 is equal to 37 minus 3 times 32. And 3 times 32 is going to be 96. So that's 37 minus 96. So that's going to become negative 59. So 59 is on the 32nd spot of this given series. Okay? Now, what if you added up all that number up to the 59th position? What would that sum be? So to find that, we go S of N is equal to N times the quantity of a sub 1 plus 
a sub n over the 2. Same general rule. Okay? And we're saying, well, on the 32nd spot, if you add it all up up to that point, what would it be? So we go s sub 32 is equal to 32 times the quantity of 34, because that's the initial number, plus we said a sub 32 is 59. So negative 59. All divide that by 2. And the 2 reduces the coefficient 32 16 times. And the top number 34 plus negative 59 is going to be negative 25. And 16 times 25 negative is going to be negative 400. Wow. Okay. Got to see that in action. <laughs> okay. So, if you add up all the numbers, because it's going to become smaller and smaller, we're going to end up adding negative numbers as well, and they will add up to become a negative integer in this case. So now the question is, where, in what position in this sequence of numbers will you find a negative 12? So again, we're going to use the general rule, s sub n is equal to n times the quantity of a sub 1 plus a sub n over the 2. So now s sub n is given to you. We want to find, where will you find negative 12? So this time, we don't know which position, so it's going to be n. We know the initial number, and that's 34. Plus, we know what a sub n is. That's the general rule that we came up with, which is 37 minus 3n, all over the 2. And this time, we're going to give it the denominator 2 by multiplying both sides of the equation by that 2. So negative 12 becomes actually negative 24 equals, now that's gone. So 34 plus 37 is 71 times the n is 71n. And n times negative 3n is, of course, negative 3n squared. And it's starting to look like a quadratic again. So we're going to bring this time, since we have a negative coefficient for the highest degree, we're going to bring it to the left side. So it becomes positive 3n squared, 71 follows, minus 71n. Negative 24 is still there, so it's minus 24, equals nothing left on the right side, so it's 0. Now we're going to factor this. We know the leading coefficient is going to be 3n times the n. Now what times what is 24? Uh, we could say 1 and 24, we could say 3 and 8, and 4 and 6, but we have to add or subtract to become a big number in the middle. And it seems like we should multiply a 24 to it. Because 24 times 3, isn't that 72? And 72, a big number, plus the 1, wouldn't that be, give me negative 71? Yeah, so there's our factor form. So zero product property says 3n plus 1 is equal to 0, or n minus 24 is equal to 0. This one subtract 1, divide 3, you get a negative number. And for our series and sequences, negative number position does not work. However, if you solve this one, add 24 to both sides, it shows you that on the 24th position, if you add up all the series of number all the way up to the 24th position and add it all up together, you'll get a negative 12 as a sum.